Since the last time we talked about Garlic OS for the uh, wonderful, beautiful Ambernic RG35XX, there have been several new releases and some fairly large changes to this custom firmware for this device. If you do not know what I'm talking about, basically we have a device here that in theory is quite solid, but the software that it came with was very limited and just wasn't all that good. Well, this individual Black Seraph on Patreon, link in the description, obviously has taken it upon themselves to remedy that problem by creating a custom firmware for this device that gives us a whole lot of what people wanted on this thing. And I have already posted a video about how to install this. I'm not gonna retread that tire in this video, but what I will talk about in this video are some of the substantial changes that we have seen since that last video. I would say that the biggest, most important change I can communicate to you guys right now actually comes from the way that the files are placed on your SD card. If we jump over to this view here, let me move this down just a little bit so that you can see there where I am. This is on my ROMs partition of my SD card. And if you've messed with this, you can already see a really big difference. So now your ROMs on your ROMs partition of your SD card should be in a ROMs folder, okay? So there's a folder for ROMs. There's a folder for BIOS, which I think might have already been there, but now there is a folder for saves, right? So before your saves were under CFW, RetroArch, RetroArch again, and then you would have saves and states. What you need to do is you have to take those saves and those states and move them to this save folder in the root of your ROMs drive, and it's under current profile, and then you have saves and states, and then lists, I believe, is your content history. That is your recently played games. Let's back out of this, though. Saves, and then it's going to be under the emulator it was played under, so GPSP is a Game Boy Advance emulator, so my saves for Game Boy Advance games are in there. Likewise, under states, emulator, and then put your save states in there. So that is the biggest thing that you need to be aware of. When you make this upgrade, you're going to have to grab your saves in your states and move them. So I talked about skins a bit in an earlier video. Skins will now feature a settings file that will allow for font and color changes. That's nice to have. I should mention the reason that a lot of these files have changed locations are for compatibility with another retro console, the MiU Mini. The idea there being that users of this device plus a MiU Mini could simply swap SD cards and everything would be exactly the same. And that's a pretty cool idea, but it did, like I said, require us moving some things around if we've already been using earlier releases. There have been some new emulator cores added, which I'm not going to go through all of them, but there have been several uh, added as well as things that were fixed at one point. Uh, I think the PlayStation emulator was not working, but that is now functioning again. We have a redesign to the recent game screen, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. And I can show you that here by going to the overhead camera. Let's go to our recent. And now what you have is an image of where you left off on that game. Very, very cool. I like that a lot. And then if you select it, well, there you go. You're back in your game. Really, really solid touch to the overall visual design of this operating system. So we've also now got support for game artwork if it's placed in the right place with the right name. Now, this is not something that I have actually taken the time to do myself. I don't have any of this artwork. Perhaps there will be an easier way to do this in the near future. Sometimes people make little scripts uh, to scrape images for your game box arts. Hopefully that is something that I can show you guys a bit later on. But for now, it's not something that I've actually done yet. There is now a way to hit the X button to remove games from your recently played games. Perhaps you tried out some ROM that you've never played or wanted to try and you don't like it. Well, now you can remove that so you don't have that constantly just staring you in the face. One issue that I'm really glad was fixed in an earlier release is the fast forward function. So you can hold your menu button and hit R1 to fast forward or uh, L1 to slow motion. Well, before fast forward would work sometimes and sometimes not. You kind of had to keep trying it over and over. Now that works flawlessly. And let me just tell you, I will never play another Pokemon game again without fast forward. It is fantastic in particular for getting some grinding done in some of the more difficult ROM hacks where you got to do a lot of grinding. Really makes life a lot easier. Although I would recommend doing one thing. So when you're in a game like this and you hit your fast forward, you're going to have this uh, situation where you have this horribly sped up audio that is just grating to the ear. So what you can do is hold down menu, hit X, 
uh, go down to set. Oh, sorry, you got to hit B and then go down to settings. Let me make sure you can see this. And then we're going to look for audio and we're going to turn on mute when fast forwarding. That is really important. And then under frame throttle, we can change fast forward rate from 4x to whatever we want. I actually like 3x. 4x is a little bit too fast for me. Go back to quick, uh, quick menu and then resume and you should be running the way that in my mind, makes a little bit more sense, but you can kind of customize that how you want. I will say though, when you're in this menu, don't go around messing with stuff if you don't know what it is. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can potentially screw up in here and make life a lot harder on yourself. I had some issues myself where I guess maybe I accidentally did something that I don't even know what I did, but it was a whole big ordeal, this big thing, and I finally just ended up wiping everything and starting over, and I have no clue what I possibly did wrong to cause these problems, but all is well now. It's fixed. I didn't lose anything, so we're totally fine. Once again, though, I just want to say, really, really awesome work, and if you own this thing, the RG35XX, go watch my video of how to install this. It is, like, preposterously simple and it is absolutely worth doing because it makes this device so much better than it was before. You know what I'm about to say? Hit that subscribe button before you leave. I'll see you on the next one and until next time, stay nerdy my friends.